Hi, and welcome to a new series we're doing on getting started with Farming Simulator 22. Beginner's Guide, we're going to walk through the basics of how everything works, um, your first day on a new starter farm, and then eventually where to go from there. So, first thing we're going to do is click on Career, come to an empty save slot, hit Continue. Now, beginners should definitely start with New Farmer. You have some land and equipment, so it's easy to get started. Medium, you don't own any land, but you do have much more money, so you can set up your own custom farm a little easier. And then start from scratch is definitely for veterans. You start with nothing. Um, we're going to go new farmer and hit continue. We're going to go to the very basic map. We're not going to use any mods or anything on this, so that everybody can do exactly what I'm doing in these videos, so let's start with Elm Creek. I'm going to turn off all the mods that I have, and let's go. Alright, so first is character creation. Simple. You've got different hairstyles, facial hairstyles, outfits you can wear, different clothes you can pick. Uh, none of it matters a whole lot, because the only time you see your character is when you're in a tractor, if you're in third person view. So we're just going to go ahead and click through that. We're not going to play guided tour, but you can do that if you want. It shows you how to use many of the implements they give you on this starter farm. So the first thing we can do, look at the map and see what our farm is. So if we zoom in here, we own the fields that are in blue. Fields are in white. We can purchase at a later date. We hit X or click farmland. It shows what area we own. And that's that field, this field, and then another field the other side of this. They give us equipment. So what we're going to do is work these three fields and get them to a state where they're ready to grow by the end of the day. First things first, we're going to harvest this field here. Jump in the harvester provided. It has it so that when you get into a vehicle, it automatically starts. If you don't like that and you want to start it yourself or leave it running when you get out of it, you can come in here and change many aspects of the game. There's all this stuff you can change. And then here, there's even more. You can change your time scale, your economic difficulty, whether traffic's on or off. Seasonal growth. If it's on, you can only plant during certain months, and you can only harvest during certain months. If you turn seasonal growth off, you can plant anything at any time, and then just harvest it when it's ready. Uh, days per month is usually... Left to one day is a really good starting place. Um, five times scale is not bad. If you're feeling a little rushed, go ahead and turn that right down to real time. That'll give you 24 hours to get through a day. Because with one day per month, the crops are going to progress when you go to bed overnight or if it rolls over to midnight. So you might want to slow that down. We'll leave it right at the standard five times. Um, this is where you would turn off that automatic engine start. Turn that off, you have to hit a button when you get in. And then there's so many menus to choose from. I know it seems overwhelming at first, but you'll only use them as you need them. Go ahead and explore all of the stuff as you go. You're not going to break it, and if you do, you've just started. You can start a new game. If you get it in a state that you don't like it and you want to start over. So, first thing we got to do is connect that header to this harvester. You can see in the bottom of the screen, it says Q will attach. So I'm going to hit that. If you don't have, in the upper left hand corner, a help window, you can hit F1 on your keyboard and it'll bring it up. And that tells you what many of the main functions do. B will turn the harvester hat on. O will put the pipe out in. We're going to need that to unload. 
comma will disable the straw swath and that'll just spread the straw but we're going to sell that straw but we want it already all piled up in a row so we'll leave that on I'll turn this off oh we need to unfold first so that unfolded the harvester now we're on and we can just drive forward start har harvesting this wheat I'll go ahead and time lapse through some of the field work so you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing so I'll be with you when we're done with this Okay, so now that we've finished harvesting, we can hit B again. That'll turn off our header. We'll hit O. That'll hold our pipe out. And then we can either hit Tab to cycle through our vehicles, or we can hit E to exit the vehicle. Walk over to the vehicle we want to get in. We're going to get in this tractor here. Hit Q to hook it to the trailer. We can hit N to open the cover. Then we're going to drive this over under the pipe so that we can collect that grain we just harvested. Okay, so you can see in the lower right hand corner near the speedometer, it shows a symbol for what grain we have in the trailer, and how much we have. We have 4,149 liters, we're 51% full. So now what do we do with it? Well, we have a silo over there on our farm. The one next to this barn doesn't actually function. The only functional silo is the one over there in the distance uh, so we can put this in there and then use this grain for chicken feed if we wanted we can take this grain somewhere like the bakery and sell it or if we own the bakery use it uh, we actually have, believe, have to turn it into flour first and then use it for um, making bread or we can just straight sell it which is what we're going to do now to find out where we can sell it. We come to this one with the bar graph. That'll show you all the things that you can buy and sell in the base game and where you can sell it at. So, Eden Grain South, Gold Crest Valley. Gold Crest Valley is the grain. That's a little bit of a different process to sell. You have to store it in the silo next to the train rent a train and sell it but it cost I believe a thousand dollars to rent the train so you only want to really use that if you have enough of something to make it worth renting the train uh, the grain mill of course will accept it and Johnson's farmers market that's got the best price right now at eight hundred and twenty two dollars other than the train but we don't have very much to sell so we're not going to the train now this price here is per a thousand liter we have 4,000 liters, um, so you can multiply that by four, and that'll be about what we'll get. If you hit space or click this button, show price fluctuations, this will show you a graph over the year of when the best time to sell it. So the best price we could possibly get is $1,223, about, 
and that happens in January. Right now we're in August, so it's actually the worst time to sell this. But we're going to go ahead and sell it anyway, just to do that process. So I will drive us over once we find where we're going. So no current prices. If we click Johnson's Farmer's Market, where we want to sell this, and hit Tag Place, it'll show up on the map. We scroll back out. You can see that it's flashing up here. This is where we're going to bring it, where it's flashing. And also, it puts a pillar of light over it so you can navigate to it better. I'll drive over there. Um, I will time lapse the driving so you don't have to watch the whole thing. So I'll see you when we get there. Okay, so now that we're at the farmer's market, you can see that the pillar of light doesn't just light up the whole building. It lights up specifically the input that we need to put this grain into. Sometimes, as you can see right next to the grain door there, the input will just be a spot on the ground. It's not necessarily even marked, and if you have those icons turned off, um, this will be a good way to tell you where it needs to go. Before we go over there, if we look in here, you hit U, it'll change the way that this trailer functions. So right now we have tip side back, the whole trailer will tip back. We have the grain door, which is just this little door here on the back. We have left side and right side. We'll just leave it to back for now, but in certain circumstances it's better to have it come out one side or the other. So we'll drive over this grate. You see the icon on the bottom will pop up. Start overloading with the I. Hit that. And it'll sell it for us. Okay, we made $3,413 in harvest income, which is not bad for our first little field. So we'll go ahead and drive back. I'll meet you back at the farm. Okay, now that we're back on the farm, we're done harvesting for the year, so we can park this trailer. We can put away the harvester. Go ahead and park this trailer where they had it, right next to the barn here. Yeah, that looks good. Let's hook up to this header trailer that's back here. Hit Q to unhook from the trailer. And I hit Q to hook back up to this trailer. We'll go ahead and pull right over to the harvester with this header trailer that they provide. Now these can be a little tricky until you get used to them. But if we get back in the harvester, let it turn on, we can put that pipe away. We can fold the harvester back up. We don't need it and then we're just going to pull forward trying to stay centered over you can see on the trailer where it has the connections where it'll connect to the header right in the center there over the tires so we'll pull up and then hit Q to release it and it should lock into place yep it just bounced and locked into place so now that header is locked into that trailer so we can go ahead and put the harvester away. In the lower right hand corner next to the speedometer you can see how much fuel it has with the green bar and you can see the if it needs repair with the orange bar. As that orange bar 
fades, you'll need to bring it to a shop or your own repair spot if you build one and get it repaired. That's most important with harvesters because with harvesters and headers that affects your yield. Um, with tractors it can affect your speed with implements it can affect your speed and stuff that you the maximum speed you're able to get but with harvesters it affects your yield which affects how much money you get so certainly want to do that like i had said before you can hit tab and move through your separate machines so we're going to tab until we get back to the tractor we were using so let's go park this We can back this header in next to barn here. And so right now we have the tractor, we have the header trailer, and we have the header on it. The repair bar will show the repair for all three of those. I'm not really sure if it's an average or if it shows the one that has the least number. Um, but it can be difficult sometimes if you have implements hooked together and they're usually hooked together. You don't unhook them very much to tell which one without going to the repair station and uh, checking to see what needs repair. Alright, so we want to get all of that straw collected. We need to do two things. First, we'll head to that repair shop because you can also customize your vehicles. So we'll drive over to the repair shop. If you need to know where it is, go into the map. And if you go back one, it shows hot. And one of those is others. That's what the repair station. Oh no, it actually comes up as the shop icon, which is under others. But the sh vehicle shop here is where we want to go. If you're not good at maps or you don't know where you are on the map, you can also tag the place down here, just like we did when we went to sell. It'll flash and it'll light up. So it makes it much easier to navigate around the map if you're before you become familiar with it when you tag places that you want to go okay so here we are at the shop now this one's a little goofy because the shop that is highlighted is the vehicle shop and this is where you'll go to purchase new vehicles and stuff if you walk up to the icon you can see if you press R, it'll open the shop menu. This is where you buy new, new tractors. Uh, you can also buy cars and forklifts. All your vehicles here. You can buy all your implements and tools. Uh, you can also buy things like fertilizer, wheat, um, pallets of fertilizer, herbicide, other things. This pack section will easily let you get into a different type of farming. So say you want to farm cotton, which is a very expensive one to start. But if you wanted to farm cotton and you weren't sure what you needed, click on this. It'll show you a selection of what you need. This is our cotton harvester. This will let you um, plant it. This is how you move cotton bales around. This is a strong enough tractor to be able to move the bales and do what you need. It's not everything you might want, um, and it's not the only options you have, but it is like a good base set of this is what you need. You can see that you'll be spending three quarters of a million dollars probably to set up for cotton. This is your discounts page. Now, this 
respawns every day with new discounts. Sometimes you can get a really good deal, but when you buy something through this page, the repair value is going to be very low, so you usually need to repair it, and that's why it's discounted. These are supposed to be like used items. Um, you can see like this I dump bucket has 24 hours on it already, working hours. This garage symbol here is what you own. So this is everything we own. So like under medium tractors, if we click that, it'll show us the different tractors that we own. And here you can see what the horsepower is, how much fuel it takes, how fast it can go, what kind of tires it has on it, the service life. Uh, this is for leased items if you lease something from the shop. So say we wanted a cotton harvester and we click on the one we want, hit customize, we can hit lease, and it'll tell us what our base cost is, the cost per day, and then the cost per working hour. Um, we do not want to harvest that for, or we do not want a harvester for $24,000, so we're going to exit out of that and go back. Uh, and then the final menu on here lets you get into the animal dealer, Let's you go back into that wardrobe to change your outfit or your face. Let's you go into construction to build new buildings and do landscaping. And lets you purchase new farmland, which all of these you can do external of this menu. Um, animal dealer, you have to actually go to the animal dealer. Wardrobe, you can usually get at most farmhouses that you can get. Uh, construction, there's a shortcut to. And farmland, there's a shortcut to. So construction, if you hold shift and hit P, it'll bring you into this mode. This is the construction mode. We'll go over that more in another episode because there's also can be a lot to this, but that's how you get to it. And then for buying farmland, if you hit the farmland button here on the main map, click on a field, it'll show you how much money you have. The value of the farmland you're looking at and what number the map has assigned to it you can buy it right here or you, if you click on one you already own you can sell it and it tells you what value you'll get back from that but what we want to do here is not this main shop we want to come over to this service area so within these caution tapes that are on the ground we park here, and then we come over to this symbol and hit R. This brings up what we have. This is where you could repair it and repaint your things to keep them looking nice, or you can customize. And if we customize this, it has multiple configurations. It can turn into a bale trailer or like a grain trailer. You can also change the wheels that you have on it. If you so wish whether or not it has a cover what the color is all the different vehicles in the game have different things that you can change on them uh, but we're going to turn this into a battle trailer customize that so now we'll have a way to get our bales once we make them someplace to sell them so let's come back over here to the main store because we are going to need a baler. So if we go back in here, we go to tools, one of the sections is balers. And there's many options to choose from. You're just gonna choose the cheapest, smallest option for now. Uh, this is good for two reasons. One, it isn't gonna cost us a lot of money. We don't have a lot of work to do right now. Plus it's gonna make bales that are small enough we can pick them up by hand. So then we don't have to buy another tool or implement to get the bales on the trailer. So if we hit details, we can go and buy it. And also, if you hit combinations, it'll show suggested thing. So this is an automatic loader for bales of the size that this will make. This will make square bales at 120 centimeters. This one makes round bales at 125 centimeters. Um, and this will pick up square bales at 120 centimeters. 
14 bales at a time. We're not going to use that today, but that's an option down the road. So if we double click on that, or if we click it and click details, bring us in here. This has nothing we can configure except the license plate if we wanted to. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and buy this. And then that will spawn over here. That's our new baler. Fairly small, and you can see that it just has a regular hitch attached to it. It doesn't need a three-point hitch or anything. So we can come back with our pickup truck and pick that up to bring it to the farm. So let's drive our bale trailer back to the farm and get our pickup truck. Okay, now that we're back at the farm, we'll go ahead and park this trailer next to the field we're going to use it at, which is right here. So we can just leave this here for now. Stop, hit Q, and we're actually going to get right out of the tractor for now. I don't want to get in the pickup truck. Take this pickup over. Back to the dealer just to pick up our new baler. Okay. Wanted to use the pickup because as you can tell it moves much faster than the tractor does. We're just going to back this up to the baler. Know we're in the right spot when our symbol pops up. Just get it close. And apparently, this pickup is not able to hook to the baler, but that's okay. We're just going to park the pickup here for now. Get out of it. And just because I want something that's a little quicker, but we'll actually move equipment around, we're going to buy something else. So, we come in to vehicles, come down to cars. We have these, the John Deere and the Mahindra. Um, and these will move that bail. Yep. This also has a little bit of a the details. Got a little dump trailer here, which is really good for feeding chickens because it only holds 460 liters, but very small coop, they don't take very much. But this will go 60 miles an hour, whereas the tractor is limited to like 25 miles an hour. It's only 17,000, we have 81, so we're going to go ahead and buy it. See if this will hook to our bail. And it will. We'll hook that up and bring it back to the farm. Oh. Before we head back to the farm, since this pickup isn't going to be of a whole lot of use to us right now, let's go ahead and sell it. Bring it over here to this shop. Go into this menu. And we can sell. And we're going to get $22,878. That more than makes up for the other vehicle we bought. Okay. Now let's get back in our vehicle. And head back to the farm. Okay, so we'll start at this end probably. So we can leave the baler right here. We'll go park this, get our tractor, and hook that up to the baler. I like these little vehicles, they're good for getting around the farm. They don't take up a lot of space, and they're more powerful than you would imagine. Head back to our tractor. We'll hook 
hook up to our little baler over here. Now the, the buttons to work most of the machines are usually the same buttons. So if we open up this menu again with F1, you can see B turns it on and off, V lowers the pickup, um, X unfolds it, so let's go ahead and unfold the baler. And then there's an AI worker, we can change our cruise control, turn it on and off, we can change our camera, which will bring us to our inside camera, or our outside camera, and we can honk. With the zero. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit B to turn it on, B to lower it, and then with the square balers, as we go, you can see it's picking up the straw and it's making our bales and pushing it through. And then when those bales are ready, they'll just fall right out of the end as it, new bales get made in front of it. So you don't even have to stop with this, you can just keep driving. So I'll go ahead and time lapse the rest of bailing this and I'll see you when we're done. Okay, now that that's done, we can turn off the baler with B, and that gives us the option in the middle there to unload the baler with Y. That'll push out all the rest of the made bales that are in there, going forward so it'll fall off. We can hit B to raise that, hit X to fold it back up, and then we can go park this somewhere. We are done with this for the year. Park this in this barn. quite cut that corner. We'll just leave it right here. That is fine. Now we can go hook back up to that trailer. You know, and these bales that are small enough, we can pick them up by hand. If you just look at them, left click, Pick them up, move them around, set them up, here, so if you hold your middle mouse button you can rotate them, you hit your right mouse button, you'll throw it, pick them up, and we'll try to make a neat stack, some degree, and I will do this, and you what I'm done.
Places me to the peak Okay, now that we've got them stacked up there as neatly as I can get them, you may have noticed these green bands that show up when you're near the trailer. These are straps that'll tie it down. You can hit R on these green bands, and that'll secure whatever is there to the trailer. Or if you're in a tractor or truck, you can hit L and it'll Grab all of them at once. So now let's see who's buying this and how much they're going to pay us for it. Come into the graph, put down the straw. You can sell it at the Animal Dealer or South Valley Biomass Energy. We're going to buy it for a dollar more, so we'll give it to them. We tag the place, go here roll out you can see that down here in the corner is the South Valley Biomass Energy Plant. So we'll go drive there and deliver these. See you when we get there. Okay so now we're at the, at the plant uh, with stuff like this we can simply drive this over the sell point and then we'll sell it directly off the trailer may have to unstrap it from it. Most of the cell points work that way. This one we may actually have to hand unload. Oh, yes. So apparently it doesn't like doing it like this, the cell points. So see if we can push all this off. Everything that falls to the ground fell. Most of these kind of points you can just drive over. I don't know if it's the trailer or the cell point that doesn't like it. Okay. Now those are sold. We'll head back to the farm. I'll meet you there. Okay, now that we're back, we'll park this trailer. Back where we had it here by the barn. We'll hook the trailer. We can go ahead and get out of this tractor and do a little more field work. We have three fields to tend to. Get in this tractor here. Go ahead and hook up the implements to it. Cultivator on the back. Weight on the front. Now, when you have multiple implements, you can see in the upper left-hand corner there, a little tractor symbol, and it has tools on the front and back. To switch between which one your keys are working for, hit the G, and it'll go to the different tools. So if we're on the front tool and we hit V to lower, that'll lower the weight instead of lowering the cultivator. We want to pull forward onto the field. We're going to use this because this is harvested and we want to replant it. But first, we need to cultivate it. We'll go ahead and cultivate this. You can see it changes the field texture. And if we go into the map, come down a little field, around field 44 here, had been wheat, the, it's purple, harvested. And we have a little strip of blue cultivate. So we're going to go ahead and cultivate this whole thing. 
I'll do the headlands. And then we'll get an AI worker to help us. So, B will raise that back up. Those lined up here. And in this direction. Over the tool. The AI helpers in this game will do what you tell them to, but they're not the smartest. This is a tiny little square field, so they probably wouldn't have any issue with this. But when you get fields that have angles or rounded corners or anything, they tend to leave spots um, between rows that they just don't get. So it's good to get the habit if you're going to use the AI workers to do around the outside one or two times on your fields and then you get the AI workers to take over. It tends to work better that way, you'll be happier in the long run. Either that or just go through afterward, clean up after them. And now we'll get this back lined up. I go ahead and put the tool down. And then I'm going to hit H, and that'll hire a helper. You can see changed in there. And now I'm not doing anything. The AI helper will cultivate the rest of this field for. So while they're doing that, we can use Tab to switch to another one. And this is the tractor I wanted to go to. So again, we're going to hit Q to pick up both this weight and this cedar, this drill, and you can see in the lower right hand corner, it's already full of seeds. It has 600 liters and right now it's set to wheat. If you want to know what the symbols are, you come down to the little book at the bottom here. This will show you everything. Drop icons, put down. There is. Uh, shows you all the icons. Props. Oh, icon overview. Props. So we're at wheat, the barley, canola, oak, sorghum, all of the crops. This is what symbol it shows up as. And like I said, it's August right now. So if we go to this calendar page, this is our crop calendar. It shows all the crops we can plant when. We can plant it when we can harvest it. Planting is green, harvesting is orange. Uh, right now we're in August, so the only thing plantable in August, canola, poplar, grass, or oilseed radish. So we're going to go ahead and plant canola in this field. So what we'll do, if we hit F1 and open that, you can see the Y key will select a different seed. Or on wheat, barley oh there's canola this grill will also do soybeans sorghum oilseed radish and grass if you want other things such as sunflowers or corn you need to get an actual planter instead of a cedar but we are selected on canola we'll go ahead and close that we pull forward onto the field this is just like the others. We have to hit X to unfold it, which just drops that down. This also has a ridge marker, which if you hit Z, it puts it down on one side. Z again puts it down on the other side. Z again lifts them back up. The, the ridge marker is used to make a line that you can follow for your next row. Um, Especially because sometimes it's hard to see exactly the texture change between some of these textures. Sometimes that's useful. We're not going to use it right now though. But we will hit B to turn this on. B to drop it down. And then just drive forward. You can see that texture's changed. It it's subtle, but it's different. This is just crumbly broken dirt. This is crumbly broken dirt and rows. 
Uh, it's easier to see from overhead the difference there. Uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll do around the outside with this. And then we'll have an AI worker take over. As you can see with our money right now, it's very slowly going down. That's because you pay your AI workers as they work. And if you have it set to default, your AI workers uh, will buy seed, they'll buy fuel for your tractor, um, fertilizer and such. Whatever level you have it at when the AI worker takes over, they'll keep it at that level. But you get charged a premium for those. That's up to you if you want to leave that on or turn that off. That's right in the menu here. It's this one. Nope, it's the other one. One with the tractor. Yeah, down here. So AI workers will buy fuel, seeds, fertilizer, slurry, manure. You can just turn that off if you want. And then if they run out of fuel or seeds or whatever they're working on, they will uh, just stop in the field. Already up. So back up. This side. Now we don't have to worry about driving over spots that we've already planted. It's only after the first growth stage of a crop that you can damage it if you drive on it with the wrong tires. And that's only if you have crop destruction turned on again in that menu. Uh, there are a ton of different things that you can adjust as far as whether cultivating will bring up stones that you need to pick up or if you need to roll or if you can destroy crops by driving on them um, and all of that is up to you what you choose so we'll go ahead lower this down we'll hire an AI worker for this we'll switch back to that other tractor looks like they finished this field so now if we go in look at it in the map we can see that the whole thing has been cultivated we go to this next the soil composition menu we can see the little yellow dots are stones and the teal color means it needs lime this the teal color means it needs lime on that field it also needs rolling as that light blue but we have this other field over here We'll go ahead and start cultivating this field that we harvested earlier. We're not going to worry too much about needing lime, rolling, or stones this time. Those are not necessary, but they do increase the yield, except for the stones. What having stones in the field will do is it'll cause you to need to repair your tractors and your tools faster. Um, but you can get stone pickers in the store that will pick the stones out of your field. We will go all o over all of that eventually. But today I just want to cultivate these two fields and get them all planted. This field has a little bit of an odd corner here and a little bit of an angle on it. So this will definitely be a better field to do the outline for, do the headlands 
and then let the AI take over. Now we have the headlands done, we'll come back up here to where it's straight, let them start here and see if they miss anything at the end. We'll go ahead with this, and uh, we'll let them do their thing, and I'll see you when it's done. Okay, now here's a situation you'll run into sometimes. Like I said, the AI aren't very smart. They both want to drive where the other one is. What I'll do is hit H again. That'll get rid of the helper and the tractor we're in. And then we can just back up and let that guy go. Maybe while he's going, we'll uh, do another loop. We're on the headlands here. Ooh, now back right into me. Okay, here we go. We'll do another loop around the headlands. Just to let him hopefully get the other side of us. So that they stop running into each other. Okay, so our cedar, let's finish this field. We'll go ahead and jump in this tractor. Bring us over to the other little field that we had. And we'll get that one seeded. I'm going to plant the same crop in all of them for now. B to turn it on, B to drop it down. And then just let the helper do this field. And hopefully they don't have any issues. Okay, so our helper's finished. So this field is done. We didn't miss any spots because we did the outside. We'll go ahead and park this implement and tractor over here. Drop the cultivator. Up the tractor. Let's go see how our cedar is getting along. I think he's about halfway done with this field. Jump in. And we'll let him continue with this. Okay, so they're done seeding, and this is a perfect example of how these AI are a bit goofy. If we look at the map, go growth, and see there's a sliver there that they miss. Back here, little sliver. It's because it didn't want to get too close to the silos and isn't smart enough to line up the implement with the edge of the field. So we'll go ahead, hit B to turn it on, B to drop it down, and we'll just plant this part ourselves. B to raise it, B to turn it off. Now the whole field is planted. Let's do the outline on this one. Then I'll let the AI helper um, plant this one. And I will see you when it's done. Okay, 
And that's that. We've harvested, cultivated, and now have all three of our fields planted. Go ahead and drop this cedar off somewhere. I guess we could put it over here by the silo. Good spot as any. Make sure that we're on our cedar, not our front weight. Hit Q to drop it. And we'll park our tractor. And we'll go to bed and the next day we'll have some more minor work to do on our fields. But it's not a whole lot. And we will do that in the next episode. So for now, we're going to go to bed. We walk up to our door and hit R. Like the time. It'll be September, so we could probably wake up at 7. That's probably about when the sun comes up. So we'll go to sleep, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any specific questions about the game or how to do anything, go ahead and leave it in the comments, and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!